Hello everyone, it's me Lutvia. Today we are going to learn about teaching speaking. There are five topics that we are going to learn. The first, types of spoken language. The second, what makes speaking difficult? The micro and macro skills of speaking. The fourth, types of speaking classroom performance. And fifth, assessing speaking. Let's start with types of spoken language. There are two types of spoken language, monologue and dialogue. Each of them is divided into two types. Monologue is divided into planned, rehearsed, spoken from a written text or note, and spontaneous, impromptu, and unplanned while dialogue is divided into interpersonal, social, conversational, and transactional, informational, and factual. What makes speaking difficult? There are some conditions that makes the student feel that speaking is difficult. What are they? The first is clustering. Fluent speech is frazzled, not word by word. Students can organize their output both cognitively and physically through clustering. The second is redundancy. Students can capitalize on redundancy, a feature of spoken language that allow a speaker to make meaning clearer. The third, reduced form. Construction, elision, reduced vowel, and other similar characteristic all pose special problems in teaching spoken English. Performance variables. One of the advantages of spoken language is that the process of thinking as you speak allow you to manifest a certain number of performance hesitation, pauses, backtracking, and correction. The next is colloquial language. Make sure that our student reasonably well acquainted with the words, idiom, and phrases of colloquial language and that they get practice in producing this form. Rate of delivery. Another salient characteristic of fluency is rate of delivery. One of our tasks in teaching spoken English is to help students achieve an acceptable speed along with other attributes of fluency. Stress, rhythm, and intonation. The stress time rhythm of spoken English and its intonation patterns convey important message. Complexity. The complexity of grammatical and discourse structure is an obvious source of difficulty, but tax complexity can also be a feature that teachers should consider. Interaction. As noted in the previous section, learning to produce strings of language in a vacuum without interlocutor would deny spoken language its richest component, the creativity of conversational negotiation. Micro and micro skills of speaking. What are the different? So micro skills refers to producing smaller chunks of language, including phonemes, morphemes, words, collocation, and facial unit. And these are some micro skills of speaking. How about micro skills of Speaking, so micro skills focus on the larger elements such as fluency, discourse, function, style, cohesion, verbal communication, and strategic option. And here are the micro skills of speaking. Now we will talk about types of speaking classroom performance. There are some types of speaking classroom performance. The first is imitative. In this type, the students are learning speaking with their ability in simply parrot back or imitate some phrase or even a sentence. This type may only focus on phonetic production, not in the purpose of meaningful interaction. The second 
types is intensive. In this type, the students are trying to be able to respond to minimal interaction, for example, to speaking aloud. It focuses on grammatical competence such as stress and rhythm. The next is responsive. This speaking performance refers to students is try to be able to respond to interaction in the comprehension task. For example, give a comment, respond to the conversation, and so on. Transactional or dialogue. Transactional language carried out for the purpose of conveying or exchanging specific information is an extended form of responsive language. For example, conversation. Interpersonal or dialogue. There are some types of interpersonal or dialogue. A casual register, colloquial language, emotionally charged language, slang, ellipsis, and sarcasm. The last is extensive or monitor. Finally, students at intermediate to advanced level are sometimes asked to give extended monologue in the form of oral report, summarize, or perhaps short speeches. Here, the register is more formal and deliberative. These monologues can be planned or impromptu. Let's move to the next topic, principle for teaching speaking skills. The first principle is focus on both fluency and accuracy. You need to bear in mind a spectrum of students' needs from language-based focus on accuracy to message-based focus on interaction, meaning, and fluency. The second principle is ascertain that the complexity of our technique is appropriate. As the teacher design and carry out techniques, the teacher should put themselves into the shoes of the students, ascertaining that the complexity of tasks is appropriate for the learner's proficiency level. Sometimes activities may be linguistically simple, for example, that involve tax complexity that cause undue difficulty. The third provide techniques that spark the interest of the student. Try at all times to appeal to the student interest, daily lives of sight, the classroom, cultural habit, and to what is of genuine relevance to them and ultimately to continuing their language learning journey. Encourage the use of authentic language in meaningful contexts. It takes energy and creativity to devise authentic context and meaningful interaction, but with the help of a storehouse of teacher resource material, it can be done. Even drills can be structured to provide a sense of authenticity. Provide appropriate feedback. So it is important for the student, it is important for the teacher to give appropriate feedback to the student in speaking skill. It is important that the teacher take the teacher take advantage of our knowledge of the L2 to inject the kinds of feedback that are appropriate for the moment. And that will help students to notice elements of language that need work. Okay, we will move to the last topic, assessing speaking skills. First, we will talk about the test types and tasks for assessing speaking. For the imitative speaking, we can use minimal pay of repetition, word phrase repetition, and sentence repetition. And for intensive, we can use read aloud, oral sentence completion, oral close procedure, dialogue completion, and directed response. In the responsive speaking, the teacher can use question and answer open-ended, question elicitation, elicitation of instruction, and paraphrasing. For the interactive speaking, the teacher can use oral interview, role play, discussion, and games. 
Okay, the extensive speaking, the item, the test item can be oral presentation, picture cute, storytelling, telling a story or news event and translation. Then what um, and how to evaluate or score the speaking task or what are the indicator in speaking skills? There are some indicator. Pronunciation, fluency, vocab, grammar, discourse, read, use, include cohesion, sociolinguistic, appropriateness, and etc. and tax. That's all about teaching speaking. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.